Hello, boys and girls. You are listening and watching Peter Talks Smackdown. And this episode of Peter Talks Smackdown is episode 41. Wherever you're listening or watching, this is on YouTube. The people on YouTube, hey, you see me? I'm throwing up the deuces for you. If you're on uh, Stitcher, SoundCloud, Podbean, uh, iTunes, what up? Thanks for listening to the show. Again, this is 41. Um, If you haven't yet, go back and check out Peter and Jake Talks Wrestling, episode 69. Um, And we actually do a bunch of shit on that episode. We... um, we give like pre pre predictions um, because the show hadn't happened yet. Like the actual go home show for Takeover London hadn't happened yet. So we did it at Wednesday before eight. So it was the pre pre prediction. We talk about uh, the possible matchups uh, going into Takeover London, and we give our predictions. Um, then we also had we talked about Raw. And then because it was the go-home show to TLC, we give our predictions to TLC. TLC 2015. And for those who actually have been looking or hadn't seen a New Day podcast, it's because we're on a hiatus. Um, We didn't do one Monday. uh, That was my fault because I was sort of caught up uh, working on my little t-shirt stuff. I'm actually wearing one now. Like if If you're actually... If you're watching on YouTube, it's a barcode Christmas shirt. <laughs> it says Christmas under it, and it has a nice little barcode. And um, it's my own little design, you know. Fuck Christmas, you know. It's all like retail, so it's a it's a as what as you would say a statement shirt. Um, if you want one, hit me up. Um, but yeah, um, it's called a life gimmick. You know, I'm working on my stuff. Nathan, he couldn't do it for the rest of the month. We're all just chilling. So we'll pick back up um, in January, um, and that will be uh, Wrestle Kingdom. um, I guess that would be Wrestle Kingdom 10 uh, time. So look forward to that moving to next month. So just know that there will be no New Day content for the month of December. But again, there will be them Peter Talks Smackdown, and there will be Peter and Jake Talks Wrestling. Next week will be uh, 70. Um, So let's go ahead and get into this motherfucking um, Smackdown and get the hell on. Um, This week, Smackdown is from Jacksonville. And the big news coming out of this Jacksonville taping is that there was these boys, maybe like in their early teens, maybe not even their early teens. I think they were like 11 or 12. And they were escorted out because the mother, they were yelling the N-word at Roman Reigns. And the people were like, yo, around like, yo, hey, wait a minute. It's not that kind of jam here, brother. (laughs) We hate the guy, but we don't hate him that much. Well, anyway, these two kids who basically didn't know anything, they were just or didn't know. And it was like, fuck that. We're just going to yell the N-word at this guy. And the mom didn't react. So you had a bunch of fans just like, yo, check your fucking kids. She didn't do it. So the, everyone became the parent and had them escorted the fuck out of there. So look, guys, I understand. I think everyone understands that bigotry and racism is wrong. Um, if you do catch someone out there acting a damn fool like that, yes, do call them out. And hold their parents responsible. Hold their homies responsible. Hold their girlfriends responsible. Like, no one got time for this shit. I'm not turning a blind eye to it. You know, you got some people who want to turn a blind eye to, like, racism and make jokes and not, you know, if, if anyone black w- wants to stand up for themselves, uh, you know, you would get, like, you know, all lives matter type shit. Like, no, 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 no. Like, fuck that. You know? No one has time for this shit. So call someone out on their bullshit. It doesn't have to be wrestling related per se. It could be just everyday life. Well, it should be everyday life. If someone's saying some dumb shit, call them out, okay? That's that's a job. And kudos to anyone in Jack to those people in Jacksonville to 
to, to rectify that situation. I really hope it was a learning experience for the mother for uh, parenting. And I hope it was a learning experience for those kids to know that, like, no, no one, that ain't cool. And maybe they're just thinking, oh, yeah, but it's the music, you know, like, we listen to music, say that stuff all the time. It's like, no, no excuse. Just, just, just chill, all right? C-H-I-double-L. L. Chill. All right, so let's get into this shit. They're like, like, fuck it. You just get the on and on and on. You get the intro. Amazing. You get that shit, right? But we don't get no video package. We don't get no promos. We got nothing. We got a fucking match right off the bat. Just a match. Like straight up. You you get the Rain Man coming in from the fucking crowd. And we get fucking the league of fucking mid-carters coming out from behind Gorilla. And we get a Roman Reigns versus ADR match. Just straight off the bat. Um, remember coming off of uh, Raw, it ended with Sheamus being speared through a table. Right? And a very, very long, a very, um, what's the word? Um, painful promo. And, you know, sort of going back and forth into a brawl. And now, you know, they still got the posse. Everyone still is like a gang. And we get this match, ADR versus Roman Reigns. And I go in because, look, what's been happening is that every time that those people are involved in this, Roman Reigns, Roman Reigns wins. He wins. He's winning all the time. And just remember, and remember, last week, four on one, League of Jobbers versus Roman Reigns, he wins. He won his crew won the fucking um that 16 person fatal four way elimination single elimination tag team match he he got the spear and the fucking win on that he sends a motherfucker uh through a table no heel heat you know he's just he's bully reigns and i'm thinking what well, what the fuck Del Rio's going in to be fucking slaughtered like lol Roman Reigns wins. He's like, uh, wow, wow. Well, anyway, so the um, there's a point, even though the match itself is just the match itself. And I'm just surprised that there was no promo attached because I guess who out there could even talk? I mean, Sheamus, fucking, no one out there can talk. May as well just do a fucking fight. Well, anyway, it's a decent enough fucking battle. It's a fucking motorcycle outside. It's a decent enough battle. Whatever. It's kick, punch, smack, kick, punch, kick, clothesline versus ADR, who's, who, he, he's, he's definitely kick personified. But anyway, it gets to a Superman punch, and Barrett and Sheamus and Rusev pull ADR out of the ring. And then chaos ensues, where the uh, Rain men come in, and you know, they just start going off. Um... It's less to a no contest, and the Rain Men stand tall. All right. We find out after that that, like, because of that whole thing, t- uh, Teddy Long wasn't available. Why don't they just scoot his ass out there anyway, just to say it? Well, anyway, we find out we get an eight man uh, four and four tag match as the main event because of those situations. Um, we get Tyler Breeze versus Dolph Ziggler. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Tyler Breeze attacks the knee, um, and that's basically the bulk of uh, the match. But Breeze goes down to a stiff fucking super kick to the face. And I thought that this was going to actually make TLC at some point. I'm thinking that's why they brought him in. Maybe to get him, you know, get him a rub, have him going into uh, TLC. I mean, he was in... Survivor Series pay-per-view and they went nuts over his win over Dolph Ziggler. Dolph Ziggler won again on Raw and for the Even Stevens and I'm thinking, hey, they're going to take that shit to uh, TLC at least for the, the pre-show. Nope. Tyler Breeze goes down in flames. This is what they used him for. Filler for Dolph Ziggler Something for Summer Rae to do post TMZ marriage. 
of Rusev and Lana. Everyone's in limbo in this. And it looks like they could have got a cool new star. But you know what? They didn't. Have fun down in Superstars, kid. It's been real. We get to New Day, and they're talking about endorsements and how they need endorsements. And they focus in on Kofi Kingston's light em up shoes, his fucking uh, Ectomobile shoes, his Batman, whatever the fuck you want to call those shoes, but they light up. Um, and then they shoot on the fact that they have to defend their titles. Whatever. I, I'm over the New Day. I, I really am. Um, their promos are way too long and. They've been overexposed, so let's just move on. Um, we find out it's the New, J- uh, New Day versus the Lucha Dragons. And in the New Day, the tag team itself is Xavier Wood and uh, Kofi Kingston. Big E is left to um, trombone. Um, he's left to the trombone task. Um, good match. I mean, Lucha Dragons, New Day... Whether it's Woods, whether it's Kofi, whether it's Biggie, they all really work well together. But Kalisto gets the hot tag, and it's it's just awesome. Kalisto's awesome. Go ahead and stop bullshitting. And uh, I watched, you know, I watched some old Rey Mysterio not too long ago, and just like stop fucking around WWE and just go ahead and push this kid. Just go ahead and sell some mask, please. I have you. I have the Lucha Dragons predicted to win the. Uh, Belt. I'm an idiot for even predicting that. Um, but nevertheless, it's time to push Kalisto. It's time to get him, give him that, give him that Rey Mysterio uh, push. But yeah, um, he wins with Selena Del Sol. He gets the pin on. Um, I think he gets the pin on. Um, yeah, on Kofi Kingston. Um, Xavier Wood doesn't do the honors this time. Which was interesting. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Normally it's Wood. Wood is normally doing the, 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 the honors, but it was it was uh, Kofi. I have Lucha Dragons winning the belts again. And um, we'll see moving forward. I have nothing much really to say. Uh, it's a shame that the Hills can't get heat going into... Um, TLC, they refuse to give it. There's no heat on no hill, so as we speak, except one, um, and this is what I'm going into now, which is the IC, the Intercontinental Champ sign, uh, Championship signing. Why? Anyway, Owens is represented by a lawyer. He's not there. Some dude, some schmuck. I can't even. I didn't even think to write his name down, but. And Ambrose is out there basically bitching about, hey, man, but this is a contract signing. You know, I want to flip the table over, you know, brawl out, you know, idiot, I'll probably do it anyway. So I'm going to sign the contract. The contract, is, I guess, is already signed by the lawyer because it gives a statement saying that um, Kevin Owens isn't in the building. I mean, he's not here. Um, any and all things are taken care of by, for the lawyer, I think he signs a fucking contract. And as Dean Ambrose signs a contract, we get a sneak attack by Kevin Owens. He's actually in the building. Sneak attack. And uh, you're thinking that the ambush is on. He throws Ambrose into the barricade. But again, I forgot we're talking about Ambrose. Ambrose doesn't ever get heat on himself. Ever. So rather than catch a beat down, he had to turn the fucking table and throw Owens into the still steps. And then... He runs inside as Ambrose chases into him. Owens, in Hill fashion, puts the lawyer in the way. Ambrose knocks down the lawyer. Owens fucking backs up the ramp. The um, dirty deeds is applied to the lawyer. And um, that's how that segment ends. But Booker T gets a good line. He goes, man. <laughs> what does he say? He says, uh, do we cheat him and how? <laughs> oh, yeah. That was, he needs to go. Um, yeah, he needs to go to the law firm of, he must work for the law firm of do we cheat him and how? Oh, boy. 
But again, standing tall in the ring is the baby face. No heat on the hill. That's why I think that he retains um, Kevin Owens. And once you think about it, too, Ambrose, again, he's so distracted by being one of the rain men that his eye is not on the ball to actually win that fucking championship. It's just it's just not. The Ascension versus Ryback. Yes. The Ascension versus Ryback. Not Connor or fucking Victor. Not either one of those. Both of them. Two on one. Poor Ascension. It's a squash match. Ryback takes out the both of them. I repeat, Ryback takes out a tag team. I, I want to like the Ascension because they're because their gimmick is they're lame, they're funny, whatever. But man, they're not that. They're not deserving of that. Not at all. No, no one's deserving of that. I mean, get some jabronis from Jacksonville. You know, I imagine that lawyer was part of some local whatever. They could have got like two jabronis out there to, to to take that. Not not people that are actually on the roster. I mean, I, I would almost think that those guys are going to get fired. Connor and Victor, they're going to get fired. Come WrestleMania, if 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 it actually gets to WrestleMania, I after this, I don't see them lasting any longer after the Royal Rumble. Not the Royal Rumble, but but TLC. They're gone. Breeze, Breeze is going to uh, he's going to go to superstars, and Connor and Victor are they're out. See ya. But as a uh, well, yeah. Well, anyway, we find out the breaking news is that the breaking news is that Ryback and Rusev will actually have a uh, a match. I think a, a a chairs match. No, they don't even say what kind of match it is. I think it's just a regular match. I don't think there's any stipulation to this match whatsoever. Maybe. I mean, we'll see. But they actually have a match on TLC. Um, Rusev and, La- and Lana are actually at, at, at a, on commentate at, at the commentator's booth. And after the squash, we get a stare down between the two of them. Uh, that being Rusev and Ryback. And Lana kind of just, they just started em- just started embracing. She embraces them on one side and then goes to the other side to be embraced. And then they just kind of walk off. And then some guy in the fucking stands goes, is that a Cinnabon on your head? <laughs> Talk about, that was funny. That was really funny. Becky Lynch versus Paige. Um, Paige is going up against Charlotte at TLC. It seems that I thought, honestly, I thought Becky Lynch and Paige was going to have an alliance. Because Becky, I mean, well, Paige hasn't been forming. Becky's like, look, Charlotte's an asshole. I'm just letting you know. And then after, like, the fake injury on Monday... It's almost two Mondays ago. The fake injury and the uh, the pin that Charlotte had on her and Paige going, see, I told you, she's an asshole. She's 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 not this nice person that you like to believe. She's 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 her father. She, she's a dirtbag. So don't don't be blinded by this. I've been talking about this the whole time. I guess that wasn't good enough. They get a match here. Flair, actually Charlotte Flair comes out, which results in a distraction disarmor. And Paige taps out. Now again, as we see for now, Charlotte is the baby face, but it's a weird baby face where she's kind of, she's an asshole. She's she's basically a heel. Um turning on Becky and you know being kind of a jerk. But Paige is the heel. And if you still want Paige at the heel, Becky Lynch taps her out. Why do I care? Where's the heel heat on her? It's just a clusterfuck. It's a clusterfuck. Oh, yeah. We forget that this is SmackDown. It's only two hours. Well, an hour and 20 minutes. We get to the main event, 
which is the Rain Men versus the League of Jobbers or whatever the fuck, Mid Carters, the League of Jackasses. Wait, anyway, these guys, I, I, I'm sitting here going like, okay, we, the writing's on the wall. The writing is on the wall. The Rain Men will win. Roman Reigns is going to spear someone for the one, two, three, and that's how it ends. And that's how it fucking ends. They, <clears throat> Ambrose is in the match, is in the, in, the, in the actual ring the most, getting his ass handed to him. They cut the ring off. Um, we also get a repeat of the beat of the Bowers drum, whatever the fuck you want to call that, on, on, on Ambrose. And Bully Reigns comes in again to stop it. They were like, oh, that was a great idea last time. Let's do it again. Like, no, don't do it again. It happened again. Like, what the fuck? These hills can't do shit, man. I, you root for the hills now not to be a jackass, but like they're in a situation where they're the baby faces. They're the ones in peril. As much as they try to make it seem like they're assholes and bad guys, they can't because the, the fucking good guys are better assholes and better jerks. <laughs> they're better bullies than the fucking hills and the hills just they play it they play it fucking legal other than a kick to the head on I think on Ambrose by Seamus that was probably all the dastardly shit that they did the entire fucking match four asshole bad guys that are to make Roman Roman Reigns' life a living hell. And it's the other way around. Again, I'm sitting here going, oh my God, when is Reigns going to get the spear and win this match? It happened 12 minutes in. It happened 12 minutes later. Roman Reigns gets a hot tag. A whole bunch of chaos happens after he hits um, Rusev with a Superman punch. We get some flying Usos. Uh, where the fuck Dean Ambrose? I don't know. He's just outside laying down. And boom, a spear to Rusev. One, two, three, victory. Yay! Roman Reigns wins. And that's how the show ends. He wins on fucking Raw. And then he wins on fucking SmackDown. Going into a pay-per-view where the belt's on the line. And, like, we don't we don't believe. We, we believe that... He's going to lose. There's no way going into this thinking that Roman Reigns actually doesn't have a chance. The writing's on the wall that he has all the chances there is because he's, he's Roman Reigns. He looks strong. He, he, he's beaten. For, he, he's, he's over. He's, what is it? He's overcoming a four-on-one. He's over. Even though he got the Raymans, he got the fucking Usos, he got Dean Ambrose. Those guys have their own issues. Those guys got their own belts to go after. The Intercontinental belt and the tag team belt. Why the fuck do they care to help out Reigns? Why can't they just keep the four on one? Why can't he, we just get feel sympathy for the guy? And have, you know, just have him have his ass handed to him so we can actually root that fucker on to win the belt? No, I'm sorry. That just doesn't work in the WWE. That's not how the way the WWE fucking operates nowadays. Because it's one thing for his LOL Cena wins, but Roman Reigns, why him? Like, seriously, what has he done to get any, just this, hey, here's the belt. I mean, at least Cena has held the fucking Intercontinental belt. At least Cena has went after the, and, and made the U.S. championship. And I'm not talking the U.S. championship challenge. I'm talking about, like, the first spinny belt was the U.S. belt that John Cena had. He's been on the fucking grind his entire career. And this guy, he just comes out of nowhere and he's handed this fucking golden egg. And you know what? What you think about it, and this is my theory, that the belt isn't main event. The belt is just the belt. It's no longer the main event. Just look at all the jabronis that's had the belt. And who has been the main event at every and all costs? Either Brock Lesnar or Undertaker. John Cena or The Rock. And you got CM Punk trying to get to the fucking top. You got all these guys. ADR. Sheamus. We got all these jabronis trying to make it to the top. But nope. That ain't main event status. You got, you got Seth Rollins. That ain't main event status. 
When Brock Lesnar had the belt, it was the fucking first time in forever that the main event, the fucking main event wrestler had the belt. Sheamus, Roman Reigns, they don't have plans for him to be the champion. They have plans for him to be the fucking main event. And that main event does not include that belt. When that fucking, because the debacle moving forward, that being Russell fucking mania, they got to get Triple H in there. And they got to start that feud, man, with Roman Reigns. While Brock Lesnar gets that belt back and slaughters everyone to get the Sheamus and slaughters him. Meanwhile, Roman Reigns is going to have a fucking feud with Triple H. And, and you know, and if that's going to be in the main event. Not whoever fuck has the belt. You get it, folks? It's never about the belt. Fuck that belt. I've given a fuck about that belt after, like, seriously, I, I, I'm going to say straight out, seriously. That hot potato moment where it was jumping between ADR, John Cena, and CM Punk. And that was like the year of Punk. That cage match. And then like this, the, 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 the money in the bank. I was like, this is no longer for the belt. This belt ain't shit. That, none of, none of, and then when The Rock comes back, and CM Punk goes on that long fucking reign, and like, he's not made of bidding. It's never about the belt, folks. I'm just, I'm just putting it out there. It's a cruel reality. That is not about the belt. ROH knows how to treat their fucking belt. New Japan knows how to treat their fucking belt. All their belts. The Intercontinental belt. The fucking the, the big gold. All that shit. ROH knows how to treat their fucking television champ. They know how to do all that shit. They know how to treat their tag team champs. They know how to do all these guys know how to do all that shit for some reason. WWE is not drinking the Kool-Aid to, to do the same fucking thing. It's not hard. I never booked a fucking wrestling match, but God damn it, I don't think it couldn't be that hard. It can't be that fucking hard. The only thing that's difficult is choosing who. Who's going to do what? Who's positioned in a certain manner? And are we going to take that son of a bitch serious? Are we going to take him serious? Are we? Not in this sports entertainment fucking world. No one's to be taken serious. And while you got this guy Seamus that looks stupid, has a belt with the fucking Seamus 515 shirt on, trying to get people to fucking fear him, and all his fucking homies from the League of Nations trying to get people to just say, hey man, these guys are a threat. Meanwhile, we got this fucking pretty boy Samoan who is just making them a laughing stock all by himself. And he got guys drinking the Kool-Aid to put their fucking issues aside and what championships they need and whatever they inspire to be as, as champions to help, a, to help him. And it's not even needed. Those guys look like idiots. Ambrose the Usos, you guys look like chumps. You look like suckers. You look thirsty. And I guess that's my rant. And I guess that make, that, that's Peter Talk Smackdown episode fucking 41. Nobody has fucking hill heat. No hill heat going in TLC. And it just goes to show that every hill is basically going to win at the fucking shits. At TLC. You name it. I think the only baby face that actually has a... Oh, look. I think the only baby faces that, that actually has a chance to come out as a champion... That at least one belt change or to get a victory. It's the Lucha Dragons. That's it. That's it. That's it. If they wouldn't have blew their loads on Dolph Ziggler and, 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 and Breeze in this show, that would have been another babyface victory. But other than that, you go down the list. What? Even Ryback. I don't see Ryback winning. Does he win? Don't you? Do you watch the show? He doesn't win. Ambrose is not going to be Owens. Sheamus is going to retain. Charlotte's going to retain. And she's the fucking, she's still the face. Oh. I am not looking forward to this TLC. I am not. But I will be doing live reactions. And unless something happens, unless somebody comes back, unless something. 
any and all reactions is just going to be for entertainment purposes. Because I'm going to be sitting back with my fucking hand on my nuts just waiting to be entertained. So if something happens, you know, I got a lot of heat from the Seamus one where it's like, oh, man, you. It's like, no, asshole. It was just such a boring fucking show. It was such a boring show that any twist, any swerve just made me excited. So that's going to happen with here. I probably just do, I probably do the tag team. You give you the last five minutes of the tag team match. Probably get that. No, I'm not doing Owens, Ambrose, but I'm definitely doing Roman Reigns, Sheamus for the in the latter match. But yeah, that's that's that, those are the only two that I think is going to be remotely interesting. Um. So yeah, hit that subscription button below. Um, again, you can subscribe to the SoundCloud page, uh, Ellen Japanese, that's one word, Ellen Japanese, L-I-N-J-A-P-A-N-E-S-E, um, subscribe there, you can subscribe on Stitcher, uh, you can subscribe on iTunes, you can subscribe on Podbean, and hell, if you have a Tumblr account, I post, I, there is a Peter and Jake Talks Wrestling Central Tumblr page. But do you think Podbean, iTunes, Stitcher Radio, SoundCloud? Yeah, Overcast. I think yeah. I need to I need to look up that. But that's another um, streaming thing that we've somehow appeared on. Um, and then you got the YouTube page. Peter talks. Uh, Peter talks SmackDown. Peter and Jake talks wrestling. And then the New Day podcast will be returning in January. And Peter draw a recap. Hit me at PJTW Central. That's the Twitter, PJTW Central. Leave a comment below. Leave a comment below. Like, thumbs up, all heart. Any of those things that show that you appreciate the podcast is greatly appreciated. And then the most important thing you could possibly do is share. If you're a wrestling fan, you have some wrestling friends, and they respect your taste and what you like. Uh, entertains you in terms of podcast and wrestling discussion share that helps us over here man it really does this is a labor of love i kick out a lot of money a lot of time to do this so the least you can do is just share this and um and and bring more in because you know who doesn't need more listeners i need more listeners we all need more listeners but other than that, I need those listeners. Give me your listeners. Shout outs to Jake. Shout outs to Kita. Shout outs to Alexa. Girl, if you're listening, hit me up, man. Let's do a podcast soon. Um, shout out to Polk, T.O. Shout out to Arthur. Shout out to all the homies. All the homies. Nathan, Jay. Shout out, shout out to you all. And um, it's going to be a wonderful weekend. Um, watching football TLC this weekend and uh, watch out for those foreign objects